everybody, in this video I will discuss device orientations and universal applications. Remember, there are two classes of devices, small devices and large devices. And among each class you have numerous screen sizes. And also between small and large devices you have behavioral differences, not that many, uh, but for example uh, in the landscape situation, for example in an iPad it behaves differently than in an iPhone, uh, the display of some menu might differ from large to small terminals, uh, you have multi-view, etc, etc. So the first solution is to build applications for each device. So you have one application, now you have uh, four or five types of uh, iPhones and similar for uh, iPads, so you will have to handle uh, 10 discrete applications with of course a part of the code that is common but all uh, that deals with user interface uh, should be different. And of course it's totally unreasonable both in terms of maintenance but also in terms of initial development. So you must think different, you must think universal. Moreover, recently, since iOS 9, uh, on large terminals uh, some variants appeared, typically the multi-view mode where you can have side by side two applications or no view in a view with multitasking capabilities, for example for cutting and pasting or drag and dropping from one application to another. And of course this has an impact on the layout of your views in iOS. So universal means that you will have the same code that will do the layouts of your user interfaces for both small and large devices. And I would even say any type of small device or any type of large device. Orientation, your device can be in portrait mode or in landscape mode and then you may have to change the layout. For example if you have an interface that is uh, in eighth, uh, if you put your device uh, in landscape mode you may have troubles because you don't have enough eighth to put every element so you want to display them differently. The idea to do so is to use relative constraints. Relative constraints allow you to uh, reach the universal aspect uh, because you will not stick your elements in your interface via specific coordinates, you will just say this one is below this other one etc etc and you can have uh, something that is very clean and that will be resizable. Okay. which is once again very important with the uh, new features on a large terminal where you can have two applications side by side. So even in the size of a screen you may have just a portion of the screen available for your application. And also you may have dedicated layout for a given device to take advantage of the surface of the screen or for a given orientation. If you do that in uh, storyboard the main advantage is that you just draw, you don't have to care about anything. You don't care about position, you don't care about how it's programmed behind, you just have to care about warnings in orange in the user interface or errors in red in the user interface. And of course if you can do it with storyboard it means that you can also do it programmatically. We will see that later in this course. However be aware that if storyboard is a great help, it's also very easy to perform a wrong operation. I just miss a click, uh, control, drag and drop or something like that and I screw up my interface and uh, it's quite difficult to see what's going on. Personally I think it's easier to read code and to see what is wrong in your code and what makes your interface not behaving correctly. But that's a point of view. So what can we say as a conclusion? Some people love storyboard, okay? And in fact, to be honest, storyboard and the previous tool that was called Interface Builder allowed once upon a time teenagers to win lots of money with a good idea and a great help for programming, in particular this interface 
aspects that are not easy to program. You had examples of killing applications such as the me machine. Uh, you just had to shake your device and then it was issuing me uh, from uh, the uh, device. Uh, however, uh, this is not anymore true. I mean that today's killing apps, you need to have the good idea, but you also need more polishing. In fact, the level of expectation of a standard customer is now much higher than it used to be 10 years ago. And so just the good idea is not enough. You need much more polishing. We can have a few counter examples. Uh, there is uh, a few years ago this Yo app that uh, uh, makes uh, 3 million downloads in a few months and 100 million Yo's send over uh, between the people owning the applications. And of course it was a copycat with the Odor application that as you can imagine, that was just saying Odor every time you wanted to uh, tell something uh, to a friend. And you have uh, here an example of uh, an app. Uh, I cannot tell it was a good idea in my mind, I would say, uh, but it was a total success. But already at the times, four years ago, the app needed a bit of polishing that was not necessary uh, at the very beginning of iOS. Thank you very much for your attention. See you later.